Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Jessica Thomas, who is the editor of the APS's online journal, Physics. Jessica, welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you here. Nice to talk to you. Fantastic conference, isn't it? It's been, it's been a busy conference, but a good one, an informative one, yeah. It's very good for you to <laughs> bring all these people together into one place. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty much the one time of the year when I see all of these people, um, both from, you know, previous work and, and just uh, in colleagues, so it's a great chance to get together. So let's talk about uh, physics for, uh, for, uh, for a minute, the online uh, journal. Describe for us what the purpose of the journal is. Well, uh, most actual journals are, they publish papers, and papers serve basically two purposes, which is to uh, mark progress in research and to communicate the results to other people that might use them. But uh, papers are actually in and of themselves a pretty lousy form of communication for anybody who's not an expert. So the idea with physics is to use news stories and commentary to um, explain those papers to people that might be interested in knowing about the results but aren't necessarily specialists themselves. So who's the target audience? Well, I, I sort of have three main groups in mind with physics. Uh, probably our, certainly our biggest readership would be other physicists who want to keep up with research in physics as a whole uh, but certainly don't have time to go trolling through the journals and reading everything that's outside of their field and they just don't, they don't have the background to penetrate papers which are really, really densely written. So that would be one group. Another important group uh, would be students who are learning concepts in school and would like to see them, how, how they're being used in modern research, uh, but may not have the, they don't know all the jargon that uh, researchers use. And so what we try to do is translate a little bit of that and make uh, modern research more accessible and but by kind of building on concepts that a student would know. And then a third, probably smaller group would be, uh, say, somebody like a librarian or a science writer or journalist who needs um, a plain English summary of what's going on in research. Uh, that they, they just need to stay up to date, but they don't have the time to go reading papers or they don't have the background. So those are the three main groups. And it's published online. Do you see that as the best way to reach those audiences? I, I do. I do like the fact that it's an online-only publication. I feel like that's, I think that's the trend and that's, that's a good environmental way to do things. Uh, I think an important thing to say about uh, physics as distinct from what other journals do with news and commentary is that not only is it online, but it is also free. So there are no paywalls. It's completely accessible. And I think that that really helps in the communication because you can just email an article to somebody and they can get it. They don't have to worry whether they have a subscription. What do you see the future of the uh, publication? Uh, well, I mean, right now what we're really focusing on is uh, making the writing as accessible as possible. And I think that's, right now that's the direction, is to just keep working really, really hard at being good at communicating. and. Reaching more audiences, I think we've been good at reaching the core group of researchers that come to the journals anyway, but I would really like to reach out to students more, uh, find out what sorts of things they would like to know about, uh, what, what, sort of, what sort of basic uh, concepts do, do they know that we could build off of when we're, we're describing research. And because I think, it, I think it's really important when you're a young scientist to as you're growing from that stage where you're just learning things in the textbooks to seeing where it's applied, I think it's, it's really good to be able to see the landscape of research out there. So whatever we can do to help with that, uh, that's what I would like to do. A lot of people this week have been talking about young scientists, but another thing people have been talking about is the need uh, within the country as a whole to re-emphasize the importance of uh, science and science education. So an accessible journal like this would have a role to play in that as well. Well, my feeling is that the, what's, what's good for science and what keeps it healthy is when the population as a whole sort of knows what's going on because I think that people recognize in science that it's about curiosity and that's a very human element. And so the more journals and physics institutions or science institutions can do to tell the population about the research that they're doing and why they're doing it and why they're curious about it, I think the more the general population will be supportive of science um, and keep it, keep it a vibrant part of, of you know, America's talent. 
Jessica, thank you ever so much indeed for talking to us today. Really appreciate that. So thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you.